How is the world reacting? America and its president leave no opportunity in commenting on the affairs of others, in offering mediation where none was sought. Now their own house is on fire, it's in a mess. What is the world saying? A lot. Some are highlighting how just and equitable their own society is. Others are using this turmoil to score propaganda points. Let's start with America's neighborhood, Canada. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, the epitome of political correctness, says that many Canadians from diverse backgrounds are watching. He says anti-black racism is real and the world must oppose it. Canadians of diverse backgrounds are um, watching like all Canadians are. Uh, the news out of the United States with shock and with horror. Um, Anti-black racism, racism is real. It's in the United States, but it's also in Canada. And we know people are facing systemic discrimination, unconscious bias and anti-black racism uh, every single day. Unconscious bias, says the Canadian Prime Minister. He seems to have achieved some self-realization during this lockdown. Mr. Trudeau himself was embroiled in allegations of racism last year. The controversy was front page news. You see, Justin Trudeau performed wearing black face makeup several times in his youth, once in a turban and robes. And this other time in an Afro wig. He had to apologize for this unconscious bias in his re-election bid. Then we have the Turkish president Recep Tayyip Erdogan with some words of wisdom to share. He put out a series of posts condemning George Floyd's death about the racist and fascist approach of the US government. He spoke about how Turkey always stands against all attacks on humanity. He said that. And about how he will fight to protect the rights of all humanity. This is Erdogan. For Mr. Erdogan, charity seems to begin miles away and ends by the time it reaches home. Turkey has led a targeted campaign against the Kurds for years. Thousands of Kurds have been displaced by the ongoing violence. The human rights situation was the worst in 2019. Somebody who is targeting societies of perceived enemies should avoid giving sermons on human rights. Next comes Iran. This is an illustrious list. Foreign Minister Jawad Zarif decided to be a little creative about it. He put out an edited version of a US State Department press release. Every mention of Iran's own suppression was swapped with the United States. The caption had a hashtag attached. World against racism. It indeed is. The world is against the treatment of blacks in America. It is also against the treatment of women, homosexuals and Jews in Iran, rightly pointed out by Mike Pompeo. And then there's Russia. The Russian Foreign Ministry said, and I quote, this incident, listen to this, this is from Russia. This incident is far from the first in a series of lawless conduct and unjustified violence by US law enforcement. This from a country that tried to stifle pro-democracy protests only last year. And finally, China's wolf warriors. They had a busy weekend and they had a lot to say. How could they not? Hua Chun Ying is a Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson. She shared a tweet by the US State Department about Hong Kong protests. The caption read, and I'm quoting, I can't breathe the last words of George Floyd. Hu Shijin. The editor of the state-run Global Times also compared the unrest in the U.S. to that in Hong Kong. He urged the president of the U.S. to go talk to the demonstrators. Just like he urged Beijing to talk to Hong Kong's rioters, his words. Last we checked, neither Beijing nor Washington took his advice. In any case, anything coming out of China on human rights is preposterous. Their own record is an unmitigated disaster. America deserves much criticism for what's happening. America's leaders who sit in judgment of others have failed miserably to walk the talk on equality, justice and human rights. But those living in glass houses like China and Iran should not be the ones throwing stones at others and not be the ones giving sermons.